Kabbalah, an ancient mystical tradition, has long been shrouded in secrecy and mystery. This veil of secrecy was not without reason. The knowledge contained within Kabbalah holds immense power, capable of transforming the consciousness of those who delve into its depths to a point of no return. What is this secret power, and what warranted such careful concealment for millennia the true nature of Kabbalah? If someone wanted to define Kabbalah in a sentence, the most accurate statement would be a road map to Unde, or standing God, imagine God as an ocean with the Sephirot, being the waves that reach the shore, each one representing a different aspect of the divine thought. According to the Kabbalah, the Sephirot are arranged along pathways that lead from Malu, the lowest sphere representing our physical reality, up to Keta, which lies just below the throne of God. We'll learn more about the individual aspects of each sphere later. What's important now is knowing that this journey is not just about spiritual ascent, but also about deep personal transformation and understanding. Gee, on top of that, Kabbalists believe that before creation, God existed as pure, infinite energy. This divine energy was so immense that it left no room for anything else to create the universe. God, God had to contract or recoil into itself, a process known as Zim Tsum. This act of divine contraction made space for creation, allowing the human race and the universe to come into existence. Understanding this concept allows us to see ourselves and the world around us as emanations of divine light, carrying within us the potential for infinite growth and transformation. An adherent to Kabbalah seeks to ascend from the bottom to the Top through rigorous ritual and meditative practices, with the ultimate goal being a vision of the throne of God, in understanding why Kabbalah was kept secret for so long. It's essential to grasp the profound implications of these teachings. Kabbalah offers a detailed map of the divine structure of the universe and our place within it. This knowledge, if misunderstood or misused, could lead to spiritual disarray or even harm. The ancient Kabbalists were acutely aware of the power contained within their teaks, hings and the potential consequences of revealing them to those unprepared. So to begin unraveling this mystery, we must first understand the essence of Kabbalah at its core. Kabbalah is a mystical interpretation of the Torah, the sacred text of Judaism. It explores the nature of the divine, the creation of the universe and the inner workings of the soul Kabbalists, believe that hidden within the Torah are, are codes and symbols that reveal the secrets of existence through meditation, study, and spiritual practice. These secrets can be deciphered leading to profound S, spiritual awakening and enlightenment, the origins, of Kabbalah can be traced back to ancient times with roots in early Jewish mysticism. However, the formalization of Kabbalistic teachings began around the 12th century, with texts such as the Seir Yetzer Book of Creation and the Zoha Book of Splendor. These texts provided a framework for understanding the mystical aspects of the Torah and introduced concepts such as the Tree of Life, the T. Sephirot emanations, and the Four Worlds. So does this paint a picture as to why Kabbalah was kept secret for so long T. He secret of Kabbalah, the main reason, is its high potential. For misuse, we haven't yet uncovered the entirety of its secrets, and one of the primary reasons Kabbalah was kept secret was due to its potential for misuse. The power of Kabbalistic knowledge is immense, and in the wrong hands it could lead to dangerous consequences. This is akin to the ancient Greek philosopher Pythagoras, who believed that certain mathematical truths should be kept secret, because they were too powerful for the uninitiated, Similarly, Kabbalists understood that the esoteric wisdom Kante, Ned within their teachings required a certain level level of spiritual maturity and ethical grounding, revealing these secrets to those unprepared or unworthy could result in spiritual harm or misuse of power. Additionally, the journey into Kabbalah requires a guide or teacher known as a Kabbalist or rabbi. The complexities and subtleties of Kabbalistic teachings necessitate proper guidance to avoid misinterpretation. This is similar to the ancient Indian tradition of guru-disciple relationships, 
where the guru imparts spiritual knowledge and disciple, ein to the disciple without a knowledgeable teacher, the profound wisdom of Kabbalah could be misunderstood or distorted, leading to confusion rather than enlightenment. The intricate symbolism and metaphors used in Kabbalistic texts also contributed to the secrecy these texts often employed cryptic language and allegories, making them difficult to understand. For the uninitiated, the Zohar, for instance, is a complex and densely written work that requires years of dedicated study to comprehend fully this use of symbolism served as a protective barrier ensuring that only those who were truly committed and spiritually prepared could access the deeper layers of meaning. It is akin to the Sufi mystics who used poetry and parables to convey spiritual truths accessible only to those with the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Now, let's delve into some of its most important concepts and theory. This is information only Kabbalah adepts are privy to. So listen carefully to understand it, for it'll be highly important later. The Tree of Life, Kabbalah teaches us that everything in the universe is interconnected and T. Had our spiritual journey is about recognizing this. Unity, one of its central symbols, is the Tree of Life, which represents the different aspects of our existence and the divine qualities we can embody. The Tree of Life is not just a symbol, it's a map of consciousness. Each of its ten spheres, called Sero, represents different attributes of God and stages of spiritual development. For instance, chest represents loving-kindness, while gavura stands for justice and discipline. Understanding and balancing these qualities within ourselves is a key aspect of Kabbalistic practice. Moreover, Kabbalah explores the idea of divine emanations. According to Kabbalistic thought, God's infinite light called in of emanates through various levels of reality, creating a bridge between the divine and the physical world. This process is known as the Sephirot, and each level represents a different aspect of divine manifestation. The structure of the Sephirot itself is a testament to the depth and complexity of Kabbalistic teachings. Each sphere represents a different aspect of the divine, and the pathways connecting them illustrate the dynamic interactions between these aspects. Malu, the lowest. Sphere represents the physical world and our everyday experiences. It is the starting point of our spiritual journey as we ascend through the Sephirot. We encounter spheres representing different attributes of God, such as chest kindness, Gavora judgment, and Tiferet beauty, each one offering unique insights and challenges. The goal of ascending the Tree of Life is not merely to reach the top, but to integrate the lessons and energies of each sphere into our lives. This process requires rigorous spiritua practice including meditation, prayer, and ethical living. The Kabbalists must develop a profound awareness of their inner world world and their relationship with the divine. It is a journey of self-discovery and divine union where the ultimate aim is to attain a vision of Keta, the highest sphere, and to experience the divine presence in its purest form. The path of Kabbalah demands a purity of heart and a readiness to confront the profound mysteries of existence. This is why Kabbalistic wisdom was traditionally transmitted from master to disciple, ensuring that the knowledge was entrusted to those who were spiritually mature and capable of handling it. Consider the parable of the pearl and the swine from the Christian tradition, which teaches that one should not give what is holy to those who cannot appreciate its value. The same principle applies to Kabbalah. The ancient masters understood that revealing this knowledge indiscriminately would be akin to casting pearls before swine, leading to its devaluation and potential misuse. Moreover, the path of Kabbalah is inherently transformative. It requires a shift in consciousness, a reorientation of one's entire being towards the divine. This is not something that can be achieved through intellectual study alone. It demands a deep personal commitment to spiritual practice. The ancient Kabbalists knew that only those who were truly ready for this transformation should be entrusted with their teachings. And now, now, we're going to begin that transformation and delve deeper into the teachings of Kabbalah. Learn these to the T, and you'll be able to transform your life completely. The Traditions of Kabbalah Kabbalah, 
Traditions vary, I, in their interpretations of the origin's purpose and even the spelling of each siot. However, at its core, the siot provides a structured way to understand and connect with the divine. Let's delve into each sephirot starting from the highest and moving down to our earthly realm. We start with Keta. Keta, often referred to as the crown, is the highest of the sephirot. It represents the ultimate unknowable aspect of God. Keta is pure potentiality, the source of all creation, and is often seen as the starting point of divine emanation. In simpler terms, Kur is like the sea, D from which everything else grows embodying the infinite. Possibilities of the universe verse to incorporate the essence of Keter into your life. Practice the art of mindfulness and meditation. Spend time each day in stillness, allowing yourself to connect with the infinite potential within you. This can help you tap into the deeper, more profound aspects of your being, opening up to the vast possibilities that lie ahead. Next is the perfect SEO for thinkers and creatives. If you crave knowledge, then study Kame, which means wisdom. It symbolizes the initial Eflay, ash of insight or creative spark that emerges from Cater. Chokma is raw, unformed knowledge, a burst of divine inspiration. Imagine it as the moment of sudden clarity or the spark of a brilliant idea. It is potential and creativity at its most primal stage to harness the power of Chokma, cultivate a habit of brainstorming and free writing. Allow your mind to wander and capture the flashes of inspiration as as they come. This can be done through keeping a journal where you jot down spontaneous ideas without judgment, fostering a creative and open mind following. Chakma is Bina, which translates to understanding Bina takes the raw energy of Chakma and shapes it into structured thought. It is the process of contemplation and analysis turning flashes of inspiration into coherent plans. Think of Baina as the careful nurturing process that turns a seed into a thriving plant to integrate Bina into your life practice setting aside time for reflection and analysis. After brainstorming ideas, spend time organizing them, planning steps for their implementation, and thinking through the details. This structured approach helps Tran. Sform raw inspiration into actionable plans, chest or mercy. The divine attribute of unconditional love and kindness. It is the expansive force that seeks to give and share without limit chest, is the benevolent aspect of God, symbolizing grace and compassion in our lives. Chest encourages us to act with generosity and open-heartedness to embody chest. Make a habit of performing acts of kindness, whether big or small. Volunteer your time, offer support to those in need, or simply practice daily acts of compassion and empathy. These actions not only benefit others, but also cultivate a sense of love and connection within. Your self-contrasting chest is gura, representing severity or strength. It embodies discipline, judgment, and restraint. Gavora is the force that sets boundaries and enforces limits, ensuring balance and order. While it might seem harsh, Gavora is essential for creating structure and maintaining harmony. It teaches us the importance of self-control and the power of discernment to practice Gura. Establish clear boundaries in your personal and professional life. Develop self-discipline through regular routine. S and healthy habits, this balance of mercy and strength, will help you maintain order and focus in your life. But balancing both chest and Gora is Typhere, often translated as beauty or harmony. It represents the perfect blend of mercy and judgment creating a harmonious and beautiful equilibrium. Typhere is the heart, where compassion and strength meet, to produce a balanced and fair outcome. It encourages us to seek harmony in our actions and relationships, practice empathy and understanding, while maintaining your own boundaries, seek to resolve conflicts with. H. Fairness and compassion aiming for harmonious relationships, but equally as important is endurance and perseverance in our goals. This is represented by netak, meaning victory. It is the force that drives us to overcome obstacles and achieve our goals. Netak is about determination and the will to succeed in our spiritual journey.
It reminds us of the importance of persistence and the power of unwavering commitment to embody netic set clear goals and stay committed to them when faced with challenges. Remind yourself of your long-term vision and key. P pushing forward. Celebrate small victories. Along the way to stay motivated and focused on your path. Next is Hod translated as Splendor, who complements Netak by representing humility and gratitude. While Netak pushes us forward, Hod ensures that we remain grounded and reflective. Hod is the acknowledgement of beauty in the details and the grace found in humility. It teaches us to appreciate the journey and the lessons learned along the way, to practice Hod. Take time each day to reflect on what you are grateful for. Cultivate humility by recognize, zing the contributions of others and appreciating the small, beautiful moments in life. This balance of drive and gratitude will enrich your spiritual journey. Following up is Yesod, or the foundation, which is the Sephirot, that connects the divine emanations to the physical world. It acts as a bridge channeling the energies of the higher Sephirot into a form that can manifest in our reality. Yod is associated with the subconscious and the vital forces that sustain life. It is the foundation upon which our physical existence rests to integrate Yesod and Gay. G in practices that connect your spiritual and physical selves. This could include yoga to chi or mindful breathing exercises. These practices help align your energy and ground you in the present moment, fostering a strong foundation for your spiritual and physical well-being. Finally, we reach Malth the Kingdom, which represents the physical world and our material universe. Malth is the culmination of the divine emanations where spiritual energies manifest in tangible form. It is the realm of everyday life, where we apply the lessons and insights gained from. The higher Sephirot Malu reminds us that spiritual growth is not only about transcending the physical, but also about integrating and embodying spirituality in our daily lives to practice Malu. Focus on living mindfully in the present moment. Apply your spiritual insights to your daily actions and interactions. Engage with the world in a way that reflects your inner growth, making your everyday life a testament to your spiritual journey. Kabbalah's teachings encourage us to see the Bible as a multi-layered text filled with hidden meanings and symbolism. Each story character and event holds deeper spiritual truths that can guide us on our journey. For example, the story of Moses leading the Israelites out of Egypt can be seen as an allegory for personal transformation and liberation from limiting beliefs by recognizing that all things are interconnected and emanate from the same divine source. We cultivate compassion and unity, transforming not only our individual lives, but also the world around us. This shift in consciousness creates a more compassionate and equitable world where people see beyond superficial diff. Errances and recognize the divine spark in each other. This is the kind of transformation that Kabbalah aims for a world where we live with integrity, kindness, and a deep sense of connection. Living in alignment with our highest values and principles means acting with integrity, kindness, and compassion in all aspects of our lives. This creates a ripple effect of positive change, inspiring others to do the same. Kabbalah encourages us to engage in acts of tikkun noam, or repairing the world. This involves taking responsibility for the well-being of others and working toe. Ards creating a more just and equitable society by contributing to the collective good. We not only enhance our spiritual growth, but also help create a world where the divine fine qualities of compassion, kindness, and unity are fully realized. More important than all that we've seen is the concept of divine timing in Kabbalah through understanding divine timing. Kabbalistic practitioners have organized and structured their whole lives in ways aligned with the universe's will. If you want to get to that level of structure, which will inevitably bring peak. A to your life, then let's uncover. Now the secrets of divine timing. Divine timing Kabbalists believe that there are appointed times for certain teachings to be revealed to the world. 
This idea is reflected in the biblical parable of Ecclesiastes, which states to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, just as seeds must be planted in the right season to bear fruit. Spiritual teachings must be revealed when humanity is ready to receive and benefit from them. The gradual unveiling of Kabbalah over the centuries suggests a divine O oh, orchestration guiding humanity's spiritual evolution. The essence of this concept is rooted in patience, trust, and surrender. It asks us to believe that the universe has a grand plan and that every event, whether joyous or challenging, unfolds at the right time for our growth and evolution. In practical terms, Divine timing can be seen in the natural rhythms and cycles of life, the changing seasons, the phases of the moon, and the growth of a seed into a tree all exemplify this principle. These natural processes remind us that everything has its season and tea. Hat patience is an essential virtue in our personal lives. Divine timing often becomes evident when we look back at significant events, a job opportunity that appeared just when it was needed, a chance encounter that led to a lifelong friendship, or a delay that ultimately prevented a mishap. All these instances highlight how timing plays a crucial role in our life's journey. Trusting in divine timing means recognizing that there is a larger picture at play, one that we may not fully understand at the moment. Applying this concept to current times, we find ours. Elves in a world where uncertainty and rapid change are constants. The global pandemic, for instance, has disrupted lives and plans on an unprecedented scale. Yet it has also provided opportunities for reflection growth and transformation. Many have found new purposes, rekindled relationships, or discovered inner strengths. They were unaware of these silver linings seen through the lens of divine timing, suggest that even in chaos, there is a divine order at work. Moreover, embracing divine timing encourages us to cultivate patience and resilience when faced with you. Each delays or obstacles, instead of reacting with frustration or despair, we can choose to see these moments as part of a larger divinely orchestrated plan. This shift in perspective can bring peace and... Reduce the stress that comes from trying to control every aspect of our lives. Another crucial aspect of divine timing is the idea of surrender. Surrendering does not mean giving up. Rather, it means trusting that the universe knows what is best for us and letting go of the need to control outcomes. This trust can be incredibly liberating, freeing us from the constant pressure to force things to happen according to our timelines. I'm curious to hear what you, the viewer, think of the Kabbalah. Let me know, I. In the comments, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.